10 evidence-based ways to sleep better at night. Citations below. Number one, avoid caffeine. It's well known that caffeine is a stimulant which keeps you up, but it's lesser known that the half-life, the amount of time it takes your body to metabolize half the caffeine in your bloodstream, is quite long and can be up to 5 or even 10 hours, which means that in some people, even many hours after you've consumed your last soda, coffee, or tea, there's some caffeine in your bloodstream, not enough to perk you up, but enough to give you insomnia. Research shows that consumption of more than 2 milligrams per kilogram of body weight of caffeine, or about 150 milligrams in an average sized person, decreases the amount of sleep you get and increases sleep latency, or the amount of time it takes to fall asleep. That's less than a single cup of coffee from Starbucks. Number two, dim the lights. Light enters the retina and information travels to the occipital lobe of the brain, which allows us to see. But it also travels to the suprachiasmatic nucleus of the hypothalamus, which is involved in regulation of the sleep-wake cycle. You probably notice if you go camping and it's very dark at night, you sleep well and easily. But the bright lights of the city, our TVs, our phones, our fluorescent lights in our homes, disturb our sleep-wake cycle. And in fact, scientific evidence shows that light exposure suppresses melatonin production, a natural sleep hormone, and shifts the sleep-wake cycle forward. So you want to go to sleep at 10, but your brain says, eh, stay up till 11. Try to dim the lights in the evening and make your bedroom as dark as possible, or you could even try a sleep shade. If you need to use your phone, you could try night mode because it's blue light which primarily drives this effect. Number three, along the same lines, try to get more light exposure during the day, but not in the last few hours before you go to sleep. In one study, subjects were randomized to receive either natural sunlight during the day or a dimmer electrical light, and those who got natural sunlight had a more consistent sleep schedule and less late awakening, as shown here. Try to grab that office window and get outside during at least part of the day. And if you can't, you could try artificial blue lights, which have been used for regulating the sleep cycle and for seasonal affective disorder. Number four, state association. We all learned that Pavlov's dog salivated every time he heard the bell. Along the same lines, you have to keep a consistent sleep routine so that you feel tired when you're ready to go to bed. Ideally, you would go to bed at the same time every night in the same location, and you would avoid doing other things in bed, such as watching TV or reading. If you can't fall asleep, don't lie in bed for hours and hours. Instead, try to sit up and read in dim light until you feel tired, and then try again. I have to admit, I didn't find great evidence for this so-called sleep hygiene, but this study did find an association between an irregular sleep cycle and insomnia with a p-value of 0.037, so it's definitely worth a try. Number five, avoid alcohol. Alcohol is a central nervous system depressant and is sedating and often helps you sleep in the short run. But due to a withdrawal effect, people often wake up early and feel energized superficially, only to crash later on due to the effects of sleep deprivation. Research suggests that alcohol suppresses REM sleep during the first half and increases wakefulness and light stage one sleep, which is less restful during the second half of sleep. Number six, exercise. This study on 11 women with insomnia found that after a 16-week exercise program, they slept on average 46 minutes longer despite spending only 20 minutes longer in bed, and they also subjectively reported better sleep quality. Of course, exercise very late at night can ramp up the heart rate, so give yourself adequate time to cool down before going to bed. Number seven, avoid nicotine. Just like caffeine, nicotine is also a CNS stimulant and can disturb rapid eye movement sleep. In fact, this study in Korea found that smokers on average report worse sleep quality. Of course, Quitting smoking can temporarily disturb sleep in the short run, so you're going to have to grind it out. Number eight, cool down. Core body temperature decreases prior to and during sleep, 
and greater declines in core temperature are associated with a higher probability of falling asleep in both mice and humans. This study on 15 healthy young men randomized some of them to sleep in a high heat capacity mattress one that draws heat away from the body. And they had more slow wave or deep sleep and reported better subjective sleep quality. I don't know if you call this science, but according to a National Sleep Foundation poll, the average ideal bedroom temperature for sleeping is 65 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 18.3 degrees Celsius. Number nine, avoid eating late at night. Eating a late meal can ramp up your metabolic rate, and according to research, it can make it harder to go to sleep and increase the time it takes to get to REM sleep. For unknown reasons, this effect is more pronounced in women than men. Number 10, reduce stress with meditation. Of course, stress and racing thoughts at night can disturb sleep, and this meta-analysis on numerous studies on mindfulness meditation to improve sleep quality showed that most of them demonstrated improvement after the intervention. And please let me know in the comments what works for you. Do you have any other suggestions? And what is your ideal sleeping temperature? And do you have suggestions for future videos?